It's Thursday, October 21st. I'm Jeff Schwartz alongside Matt Ford. This is Jeff Schwartz of Smarter Than You. We're powered by the Varsity Podcast Network, and we are here to preview a weekend of college and NFL action. And the lines are as stinky as they come, especially in the NFL, Matt. But guess what? We had a winning, well, not a winning week. We won more than one, zero games. <laughs> but like that, we were two and three last week. We are on the worst dry spell of my career, uh, your career, anyone's career. It's been a bad time to gamble on football. But I enjoy doing it anyways, buddy. How are you? Dude, we're crawling back. That, I got to say, the, I was like, ready to have a little bit of self-talk if the if the titans didn't cover on monday night that was one where it's just like all our principles good team home dog overvalued favorite yes. road favorite that was one where we were like we have to pick this one and i remember just thinking like while i was watching i was like if we lose this one i'm going to lose <sighs> my mind but we did it we did and, and i wonder if we turned a corner and 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 the the worst part about all these losses too, we we were texting early in the day on Sunday, is like there were no other games we were like, man, gotta have that one. Like, oh, we screwed up and didn't put that one in there. We we're just like, oh shit, the Browns just didn't show up. Like, yeah. I, well, we don't want to tell you, they just, they didn't show up. Yeah, in the one p.m.s, all the favorites covered in the one o'clocks. Yeah, it ended up being eight and six. The favorites covering, I think, for the week, depending on a few numbers. So. That was killing us like the early games were just murdering us. And then at the end, eventually, you know, the the Seahawks came through. Uh, We didn't have them. Uh, The Titans came through. Yeah, we had Pittsburgh. (laughs) But like eventually the other team, the the underdog started to cover. So I don't know what's going on. It's been a strange couple weeks, but it's a long season. It is a long season. It's not even halfway done. And we have an extra week this year. So we'll. we'll, uh, That's right. But yes, the lines are are not very fun this week. Um, We'll we'll talk about all that. But first, let's get to college football. Where I'm actually good. I'm good at the Pac-12 conference. Yeah, you're doing great. I know that I don't know how many people are listening for the Pac-12 conference, but guess what? I'm good at this conference. Uh, I'm 23 and 14 on the year on my radio picks. I give out only a couple picks a week. I'm 14 and seven on those picks on Twitter. Like I know the Pac-12 and the first one I'm going to this weekend is Oregon is visiting UCLA. I'm taking Oregon here. Everyone's taking UCLA. I, I've seen across the board. Um, everyone's out on Oregon and I get it. Oregon is one and five against the spread. They have pretty much look like poop outside of playing Ohio State. But here's what Oregon is, Matt. Listen to this. Oregon, they're glory hounds, okay? They play sure. much better in big football games. I'll give you some examples. Washington is our rival. Most years, Washington's ranked in the top 25. Under Mario Cristobal, Oregon has played Washington twice. They've beaten them and covered both games. USC played USC twice. Once in the Coliseum, once in the Coliseum again last year in the Pac-12 title game. Guess what? Two wins, right? Two big games, two wins, two covers. We played in the Pac-12 title game against Utah as an underdog. Win, covered. Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl as an underdog. Win and covered. Ohio State, win and covered. Can I get my theme here right? We played Auburn in 2019. Didn't win the game, didn't cover, but that really wasn't the story of the game, right? We were up until the very last play of that game, essentially Bo Nix uh, with a touchdown. So Oregon plays big in big games. This is a big game. It is a college game day game. College game day is going to Los Angeles, and mm. this will feel big for Oregon. Half their team is from Southern California. They're going to want to play at home. They play well, again, at USC the last couple of years. And it's two teams with very similar profiles. Run the football, not quarter, uh, not good quarterbacks. That They both can run, DTR and Anthony Brown, but they're not very good. They're rated seventh. Uh, uh, and 12th by Pro Football Focus, uh, Anthony Brown, Oregon's quarterback being 12th. Uh, but Oregon's defense is just a little bit better. They're sixth in the country at explosive play rate. They do not give up explosive plays. They kind of let you bleed them, but then they make enough stops. They're 37th in yards, excuse me, points per drive. Uh, UCLA specifically has lost to two teams this year, Fresno and Arizona State, who have competent quarterbacks because they bring a lot of pressure. They blitz a lot, they blitz a lot, and teams take advantage of that. They know what they're doing. And I mean, look, I don't really love Anthony Brown, Oregon's quarterback. But I think they get this done uh, and find ways to get after UCLA. So give me Oregon here. Everyone's picking UCLA, Matt. You go anywhere you look. Everything the Bruins here. Um, I know my Ducks pretty well. I'll take Oregon. Taking them on the money line or taking the two and a half? I'll take two and a half, but they're going to win this game. And the most frustrating part, I'm telling you right now. So Fox has said next week 
They're taking whatever game, whoever wins this game, UCLA or Oregon, they're taking them in the national slot on October 30th. Oregon plays Colorado, who's awful. UCLA plays Utah. There's a distinct scenario where Oregon wins this game by 10 this weekend and then beats Colorado by like four at home. And it's just going to be the most maddening thing of all time. Um, so give me the Ducks here. I'll take them on the money. I'll take them plus two and a half, but they win this game outright in my opinion. Um, I got Notre Dame minus seven hosting USC. Both teams off a bye. I don't have many gambling principles in college football. Uh, one of them that I do have is fade USC anytime they play a team with a pulse. Uh, people will say, hey, Notre Dame can't rush the football. Notre Dame's offensive line's not very good this year. Well, let's see. Uh, in, in Utah's three losses, they allowed 180 rushing yards to Utah, the most of the season. Uh, Oregon State, they allowed 322 rushing yards. And Stanford, who's 129th in rushing, they allowed 141 rushing yards to Stanford. Um, USC just can't stop anyone who has a pulse on offense. And Notre Dame has a pulse. Now, this might be a faint pulse. We don't know who's playing a quarterback, right? Jack Cohen, it's not, it's not great. But on the flip side, USC's offense, guys, is going to get manhandled by Notre Dame. Anytime they play physical defense, they are stuck in the mud. They have one answer. That's Drake London. Uh, he's fantastic. Take him away. The offense is dead in the water. So give me the Irish here, minus seven. I don't know if I take it over seven, Matt. I got six and a half. But I'll take the seven here. Looks like this opened at three. Uh, lots and lots have been pouring in on uh, Notre Dame. So I think uh, you're getting you're getting good value on USC at, at plus seven now. Yeah, I'm not still not taking USC. Um, there's no chance in hell. You, you need me to take USC in this game. Uh, Oklahoma State, Iowa is really interesting. So Oklahoma State has won three straight games um, against ranked opponents. And they're going to Iowa State and they're getting seven points, kind of like the standard standard home line, right? Oklahoma State, we know off a win against Texas last week. And you can look at that and say, hey, they're, you know, they might be emotionally down for this game. We don't know where their heads will be. Uh, but really for me, I'm taking Oklahoma State slightly here, and I'll tell you why. Um, their defense is outstanding. They have been great all season and they can rely on that defense a lot on, on road games, right? When things kind of get tough, they, they turn to their defense. They allowed one yard uh, for most of the, of the fourth quarter against Texas. And Iowa State's quarterback, Brock Purdy, has struggled when facing any sort of defense that can kind of give him a little bit of trouble. And Oklahoma State can definitely do that. The concern here for me is Oklahoma State's offense with with uh, with with uh, with Spencer at quarterback? They, they just like ugh. It, you know he's completing fifty eight percent of passes, six touchdowns, five interceptions. It just worries me. I mean Iowa State we know defensively um, is still pretty good, even though offensively they're having their issues. But I I still will roll with the pokes here. Another big road game, seven points is a lot for a team that can play good defense. Uh, I'll go with the pokes here. Interesting. The sharps are all over Iowa State. Uh, the public is is mostly on Oklahoma State here, but oh, that doesn't matter. Sometimes the public wins. Shocking. Um, I'm uh, yeah. I mean, the, the analytics guys have this at like ten. Iowa State favored by ten. That's that's why I think they're still on uh, on Iowa State here. Uh, last one for me. Um, Clemson is visiting Pittsburgh. Uh, Clemson does not cover the spread. Um, they're zero and six so far this season. Unbelievable. Because they can't move the ball in offense. Um, DJ Ungale, I can't even pronounce his name. I never always pronounce it wrong. I always, I always screwed up. He's averaging 4.5 adjusted air yards per pass attempt. That's atrocious. Against man coverage, he's only averaging 3.9, excuse me, 3.8 yards per attempt. Uh, Pittsburgh's defense, guys, is, is actually low-key pretty good this year. Um, they're fifth in the country in three and out percentage. Uh, they're sixth in success rate. Uh, they're 15th in points per drive. They're eighth in yards per drive. It's Pittsburgh's defense. I mean, the rushing success, seventh. Um, they're a really good defense. They get a ton of pressure. They're they're uh, 19th in the country in pressure rate. They're sixth in sack rate. Uh, I just think their defense will carry this game because Clemson cannot score. And offensively, Kenny Pickett completing near 70% of passes, 21 touchdowns, one interception. Clemson's defense is still good, but like this game's going to be 17-7. Like Clemson just can't score enough in this game. So I will take, uh, again, I assume a public play taking uh, the, the Pitt Panthers at home minus the three against Clemson. What did you think of those rumors about uh, Swinney going to uh, LSU? Yeah, did you hear I, about I don't. I just I can't imagine that. Um, I think Clemson still it's easier to win a, a championship in the ACC than it is the the you know the SEC. They're already making so much money. I think if he goes back to the SEC, it's only for Nick Saban's job because he's a former. He you know, went to Alabama, mm -hmm. so I, I don't. I think LSU, he's not in that job. No. 
Interesting. I like the like Death Valley, Death Valley thing. That was uh, it was an interesting way to frame that one. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's he's allowed to have one bad year, right? Like it happens. Not everyone can yeah, be Nick Saban. Yeah, well, well, yeah, one bad. Yeah, um, there's no problem with that. Yeah. All right. Should we move to uh, to the pros? Oh God, I guess. <laughs> All right. Our our season record is. Nine don't and, we even nine and not even, 21. It's, it's not even pointless it's not even worth it but we were better last week than we were the last two weeks so hey, uh, we're we three and 12 last th- we're, we're three and 12 the last two three weeks oh, brutal all right let's get to it well speaking of ugly the denver broncos are headed to cleveland's uh tomorrow as of tape time thursday night case keenum is starting so this line has moved quite a bit it's now at the browns favored by two I know what you bet on this before that news, but I'm I'm curious yeah. where you stand now uh, where this with this number. Yeah, today I was looking at numbers, you know, because I spend typically, you know, Tuesday doing a lot of college football stuff and Wednesdays when I start getting to my NFL stuff. And so um, I was like, oh, shit, the Broncos are still getting three and a half. I'll take the three and a half. Now it's obviously at two. I'm talking about the money line. This is before the Baker Mayfield news that came out. Um, the Browns are not only without Baker Mayfield, they're without both their running backs. They're without maybe both their off of tackles again. Uh, they're without maybe their two best wide receivers. Um, they are possibly without uh, some defensive players as well. They're one of their rookie linebackers is out. clowney has been beat up lately. Some of their corners have been beat up. Um, they're just really beat to shit right now. It feels like one of those years where it's like, it's just not their year. And I, I was talked about on the podcast Tuesday, disappointed in their season, but at plus two, do we still take Denver here? I don't know. Um, I feel like it's seven. You know, obviously it's seven. This would have been easy. Even at three, but at two, I mean, we're basically betting on them to win the game, right? And is it, the thing about it is it's very obvious to pick Denver here, right? Like, is yeah. it one of those where we're thinking too much about this? Like, fuck it. Take Denver. We know they're the best, they, they, but they're not a good team, though. The thing is, like, if, they're, if it was a better team, yeah. I'd be all over it, but, but Denver is 22nd in DVOA. Like they're not that good of a team right now. I know. Well, a few things, a few things are kind of like to, uh, jump out to me. The first is like, this is the trends all say here to take Denver. They're 60% against the spread after a loss under Fangio. They're 60% ish as a road dog under Fangio against the spread, but and, and they're a very good rush defense. They're number four against the rush uh, in terms of yards per carry this year, Denver C. But I just have this feeling Cleveland wins. I, I it's not it's not real analysis. It just feels like they, they kind of can't lose this. They can't go to three and four. You know, Case Keenum is in there. Case Keenum is 58 percent against the spread in his career. Just for reference, Aaron Rodgers is 59 percent. Yeah. He's always been good. But Bridgewater is also really good. And he's he's best on the road as an underdog so there's just this yeah, thing he's, by the way he's 23 and 4 against the spread on the road in his career <sighs> man that's insane and Fan, Fangio I think you, you listen to this as well this is from our friend Chris Raybon as usual he has a lot of these nuggets on, on the Action Network app um, Fangio's 12 and 5 against the spread as a dog off a loss <sighs> yeah I mean that's uh, that's impressive I I guess it's Denver still um, but you've we've missed the number Uh yeah, it's that's not, the only problem. And, is we and like Cleveland can't lose this. Like they can't go to, you know, Baltimore could be what, six and one after this? Like that, you know, if they're three and four in that division with Cincy and Pittsburgh, like they, they could be fourth in the division. Like that's crazy. I, I don't I don't know. This is a stay away for me. I, I would have liked it at three and a half also. Yeah, I'm with you here. I think we just stay away um from this and see if we can find some other value. If we come back to the end of this and we're like, Phew. yeah. Then then we'll come back and look at this again. But I'm I'm kind of with you here, where I just I, I can't do it at this number. Yeah, everyone likes Denver too much. It's it's scary. Um, all right, let's let's move to one that we've gone back and forth on uh, on text this week. It's the Bengals at Baltimore. Um, Baltimore laying six and a half right now. Uh, whew, man, what a what an important game here. I feel like we'll learn something from this. Yeah. So. Um, I really like the Ravens here, but there's one specific concern I have, and this is where I think sometimes kind of my X and O's brain takes over because this line open with the Bengals getting 10 points. So it's down to six and a half. So you're getting a ton of value here on Baltimore if you want Baltimore. And my concern is that we're seeing, 
you know, Baltimore's obviously riding a high, and at some point that high comes down. And it could be against a Bengals team that's been much better on defense. Um, you know, this season they're fifth in DVOA on defense. Um, and, you know, a Buffalo, excuse me, a, a Bengals team that is able to hit deep passes at a, at a high rate and against the Ravens defense with how much they pressure and, and stay in man coverage, that's a really good way to beat them, right? And, and again, all the hype is on Baltimore right now. Um, I don't feel great about this one. I thought I thought I would. I thought like for sure. We talked about even Monday. I'm like I I'm gonna pound yeah. on on the Ravens here, but there 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 is there is value in this line because of it coming down three and a half points. Yeah, I've seen this kind of bounce around. It's six. I think I would feel a little bit better about Baltimore. The, so Zach Taylor's never beaten the Ravens. Lamar Jackson's never lost to the Bengals that I think Baltimore, you know, I kind of can't tell with them, right? Like last week, they absolutely smoked the Chargers. There's a, certainly a case to be made that they're the best team in the league now, right now, um, as a result of that. But they also almost lost to the Lions. They've had like, yeah. you know, they had a, a couple of strange games, that Kansas City game. The Colts game was sort of a weird game. Like, I don't really know yeah. what they are. So there's part I'm of me that's you. like, hey, divisional game, like just take Joe Burrow and spend almost a touchdown. But like this could also just be an ass kicking. Like there is a world where, you know, the Ravens just come in here and the Bengals who are riding high off of, you know, beating the Lions last week are a little bit overvalued. So I'm just kind of split down I'm, the middle. I, I don't really it's know. It's what, it's what I'm worried about. Oddly, Baltimore's worse at home against the spread under Harbaugh yeah. than on the road. Lamar yeah. Jackson's better on the road um, against the spread. And there's something just doesn't feel right about this one. Uh, we we'll, we'll stay away. We can stay away from it now. Ugh. I yeah. I was kind of hoping you'd talk me into Baltimore, but I, I just something feels off. I mean, I I oh, my first initial impression was Baltimore. Um, I'm gonna have it in my maybes. Like we come back to it at some point because again, I think we're not gonna be able to get to. Five, and we're yeah. gonna just have to kind of throw shit against the wall here. Yeah. Um, this is a good, this is a good teaser game if you want to move the, the Ravens down from six and a half to to half a point. You know, this this year really, excuse me, this week I should say is very. You tell Vegas was tired of getting beat on teasers, um, and went with a bunch of lines here that are hard to tease, especially as we get into some of the big favorites. Yeah. Um, but Baltimore wouldn't be my tease option this week. So I'm saying if you would like to play them, maybe the tease is the better way to go. Yeah, that makes sense. Though I don't, I don't see Baltimore losing this, but I, yeah, that's that's a good way to play it. Um, next up is my hideous Washington football team at Green Bay. This number keeps moving every time I look; it's different. Uh, the, currently, I'm seeing it at eight and a half for Green Bay. Um, eight, eight and a half. It was up to nine and a half. I, oof, man, what do you think? So this is going to be fun to talk about because my original thought was Washington. You text me and was like, F you. Yep. We're taking Green Bay. My team's lifeless. And I think you're now back to Washington. I mean, this is just a straight like Packers have kind of looked lethargic at times this year. Right. Washington has to win. Like they have to play well. They haven't played well in a couple of weeks. And you can make the argument that they're just they're just that's what they are. Right. They're just not going to be good. Um, but I don't know, man. This is a lot of points. Um, for a Green Bay defense that is not very good. Yep. Um, but again, Kansas City's defense wasn't any good, and Washington got shut out in the second half. And they play for too many field goals. They're too conservative now. And I, I, I would feel better laying it on the Packers. But I mean, you still get eight points, eight and a half with the, with with a Washington team that's not bad enough to be that big of, a, of an underdog here. Yeah, that's kind of where I netted out. Um. Here's the thing. Green Bay plays Arizona uh, next. They play them uh, on a short week at Arizona on Thursday. The Packers just came off that that great road win against uh, the Bears. This is not if you look at the two teams coming into this, this is Washington's life like this is it. They're not going to win this game anyway, but this is Heineke playing for a chance to basically extend his run as a starter, maybe ever, because when Fitz, Fitzpatrick is isn't too far away from coming back most likely uh washington is just at a low like you saw what happened last week with the sean taylor thing it was just like a disaster 
uh, this is like what Ron Rivera tends to be good at is when the adversity is really high, the, his teams tend to sort of overperform. Yeah. I think that they're going to show up. And this is a line that basically says, hey, they're not going to show up and Green Bay is just going to walk all over them. Green Bay has been great. I, if I'm not mistaken, they're five and one against the spread this season. Um, so they're probably a little bit overvalued coming home. They just need to win this game and get out of it. We've seen this happen with Rodgers all the time where they just sort of skate. Maybe it's like a last possession. If you can get eight and a half, nine, I think you just have to take Washington and hold your nose. Like, I, I just I think that's sort of where I am. I'm, I'm with you. A very, a very public Packers team here uh, who's been covering a lot against the spread. And they have it like last week was not a pretty game for them either. Right. No. Um, so I'm 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 good with holding my nose here and just. And just doing it. The sharps are with us. Uh, one other thing, too. Big discrepancy. Um, there are 10 in, uh, Packers, just something to note here, 10 and 6 against the spread, laying 7 and a half to 12 and a half at home over the past 70. It's very specific. I, I think it's kind of a silly number, but I'm throwing it out there because it's a number I got. I'm, I'm going with Washington here. But Washington, I mean, we're going to talk about uh, – let me see what we're, we're actually talking about the Dolphins next. It's funny. Washington and the Dolphins both last year were incredible against the spread teams because of the strength of their coaching staff. And this year they just can't cover anything. And yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick, oddly, is sort of the tie between them. But I do sort of wonder, like, is this going to sort of turn around soon? And maybe that's a good way to segue to this Falcons Dolphins game, which no one is going to watch. The Falcons are favored by two and a half points on the road in Miami, Miami, no bye week, which they apparently opted for after the London game. Um, why don't you explain to people why we have to bet this? Well, because Atlanta is not very good and they're off a of bye. I, I, I get that. But the Dolphins to me are, are definitely the play here. Their season is, I mean, if they lose this game, and their season might be done already, but they lose this game, that's it. There, yep. there is no – there. I mean, there's changes happening, people losing jobs. Um, yep. I, I'm just – I am out. worried about Atlanta off a of bye. But Atlanta, guys, is 32nd in overall DVOA. Like, they're 32nd on special teams. They're 32nd – it's to be 30th on, on, on defense, 29th. I mean, they're just not – they're not good. And, again, they're playing outside off a of bye. I, I just – I got. I just. I feel good taking the Dolphins. I don't really have a great other reason than 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 that. Yeah, I think that everyone is just so out on them. It's like you lose to Jacksonville. Now all of a sudden they're not favored at home against Atlanta. Like a week ago, this was probably what two or three for Miami. Um, yeah, I would. I would imagine. I'd probably find the look at headlines. Yeah, I yeah. imagine Miami is favored by three. Yeah, I think it's interesting. They the Dolphins apparently requested to not have a bye week. They're the first team yeah, after the game. That, yeah. First time since the 2016 Colts, who won their next game. Actually, when they went back to Indy with no buy, uh, they had Andrew Luck though. Not the yeah, Dolphins uh, are favored by by two and a half on the look ahead. Yeah, so I think this is. I mean, that's a, that's a ridiculous swing. Um, for you know, not that much happened. They had they had a bad game. Flores made a terrible decision uh, to to call that timeout at the end of the game. But I think uh, I think Miami's the, probably the better team all around if Tua can just not completely destroy us. Yeah, let's let's do. I'm good with that. Let's put uh, uh, the uh, the fins in here. I know it sucks. God. It's terrible. These games are good. really tough this week. Uh, yeah. Another another gross one is is uh, the Jets at the Pats. Uh, yeah. The Pats are laying seven. Uh, right now, these two teams have already played. It was already hideous. Do we want any piece of this one? No, this is just a teaser option for New England. You put New England down at one and you let it ride. I don't want. I want no part of this game. Yeah. None. I yeah. feel like we can spend time doing other stuff. New England's just not covering at the same rate. They're too conservative. They're not making enough plays yeah. uh, to to win these games. Obviously, it wasn't really their fault they lost that game. But um, I'm I'm. Out, out, out on New England. Same right here. Now. A couple of fun things just to, just for us to laugh at. New England, 0-4 in Foxborough this year. 0-4. Uh, Pats are 1-4 against the spread this year. I mean, this Belichick, no Brady thing is starting to really get out of control. I mean, that is like, yeah. I mean, his against the spread record with Brady is insane. Um, and rookies 0 and 23 straight up going into New England against Belichick. So, uh, yeah, teaser, teaser makes sense here. Um, good stats, terrible game. Speaking of terrible games, the Panthers, the Jeff Schwartz Bowl, the, the Panthers are going to the Giants. Uh, the Giants are plus three at home. Do we dare? 
Do we dare do what side? I, I guess I was assuming the Giants, but I mean, we're not, right? The Giants are 5-12 and 12, <laughs> uh, against the spread at MetLife Stadium. That, that place is going to be a, a freaking cemetery. It's going to be dead. Um, they're without Saquon. We know that, right? Yep. Their left tackle went on injured reserve. Uh, they've had two other linemen on injured reserve so far this year. Tony uh, defensively, the, yeah, Galladay may, may or may not play. Defensively, they're a complete wreck as well. Um, Carolina has dropped to 25th in DVOA, by the way. It's pretty funny. They jumped, they jumped pretty fast. They're not good. Um, They're just not good. I think the play here would be taking the Panthers minus the three, but I, I don't want to do it. But I'm saying like, I think that I, don't, I actually don't think that's a terrible wager. I, the Giants are just, dude, they're lifeless, buddy. They're absolutely lifeless. And that there's a reason why they don't play well at home. It's because that place is so sterile. It's dead mm-hmm. in there. And I, the Panthers obviously kind of, need a win feeling like the, the, they're going to pressure the shit out of, out of Carolina. I mean, out of the New York, the giants just won't be able to protect anything. I would play the Panthers here. I, I would, but I, I don't know if that's our best play of the week. Yeah. I, oh God. Oh, it's making a maybe because the pickings are so slim, but I, I mean, man, I don't like that at all. I just, yeah. I mean, you, in any, you, you want to take the giants here. If you're taking a side, just based on the, you know, Home dog getting three. Yeah, I put him a in maybe. Team, but like, good lord, that is ugly. Can we talk about a good game? I think it's time to talk about a good game. The Chiefs are going to Tennessee. I looked at this line and actually misread it for like a day because I was like, oh, that makes sense. But I read it wrong. The Chiefs are favored by five and a half in Tennessee. I just, I just read it as the Titans were favored, and that didn't seem crazy to me. But the Chiefs are favored by five and a half in Tennessee. I don't know how you don't take the Titans here. What is um, this line? Like, what am I missing? It's very confusing. Uh, it opened at three, two, and I think people just smashed the Chiefs because they they won that game this past weekend um, in in Washington. I like, think you you Washington. have to play Tennessee here, right? Like, I don't really. There's no other choice. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, the Chiefs are going to win win this game, but like they can't stop the run. They can't do anything on defense. I mean, they're they're better, but they I don't I dude. I mean, unless the thought is like they're going to win this game 42-31, I, I guess it's possible. Um, Tennessee can't stop anyone either, but this just doesn't feel right to me. They both have bad deal. I mean, the over is probably the play here if you're if you're wagering on this game. Uh, Kansas State's defense, second in DVOA, second. In, I mean, they're still good defense, but I, I'm. I don't know. Tennessee's 22nd, 23rd in DVOA, 28th on defense. Not good on special teams. It's you got to take Tennessee though. I mean, as a as a home dog, I get that they just had it. They're coming off the short week. I get that they just had a big emotional win, but the bets didn't go that way. They went the other way. I think that people are just so eager to bet on Kansas City again, the public. They're like, "All right, they finally covered. They beat a team, they, you know, Washington sucked last week. They beat Taylor Heineke. Awesome." Uh Personally, I, I like the Chiefs are giving up five yards a carry. The games where they've really struggled have been against teams that can run. Uh, Baltimore among them, Cleveland's they won, but it was tight. Uh, the Chargers ran all over them. They are going to get annihilated by Derrick Henry. But the 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 thing is, the script on how teams have beaten Kansas City in the past is just. You limit their explosive plays, obviously, and you hold the ball. You keep their offense off the field and you kind of frustrate them. And then Mahomes starts to press. And then that's when the mistakes come. So I think that's what's going to happen here. They're just going to pound the ball. And by the way, this is the one two week window where Julio Jones is going to be healthy. He made a real impact last week. This is the the Titans aren't going to be playing much better than this. And the Chiefs just they still haven't covered hardly any games in over a year. So it's got to be Tennessee. Here's the thing I worry about. If the Chiefs don't turn the ball over, because they have they've had like the worst turnover luck of any of any team this year. If they have the ball seven or eight times, are they gonna be without a score? Like they're gonna score every single drive. And Tennessee. If, if Tennessee has like two drives they don't score, I mean or, uh, Oregon. Uh Chiefs defense allowed seven points to Buffalo in the second half and zero to Washington in the second half. Like they're playing a little bit better. They're not good against the run. I'm just this. The thing about this, Matt, we've talked about this for a while. When the line seems this fishy, it's like, ugh. yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm fine with putting Tennessee in there. I guess I'd, I'd rather just maybe put the maybes for now because I just, huh? I, I mean, maybe I'm just so 
I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just overthinking it too much. I think, I mean, this is probably my favorite one. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's still, it's no fun to bet against Kansas city, but, uh, <laughs> Well, we have a lot of. I mean, we don't have much in here. Yeah, your don't. favorite one typically, your favorite one typically wins every week too. So, um, we'll put this on the on the high maybe. So, put it in, a, in the, the the yes for now. All right, let's do that because we're about to step into a minefield here. Uh, Lions oh, yeah. <laughs> at Rams, the uh, Goff Stafford revenge game. Uh, this line has moved a lot, so I'm going to just double check what the latest is. I see it now at 15 and a half um, for LA. Um, what do you think? I would take the Rams. The Lions, we bet them last week. I don't think they gave up on their season. I mean, they're, they're being called out by their quarter, by, by their head coach is Jared Goff. Um, I mean, we, we can't, I don't, I don't think we can play this, but the Rams should beat this, should beat the shit out of this Lions team. Should. Yeah. I mean, they will, but they should. I actually think the extra point here really matters. Um, teams getting 15 and a half actually have historically winning against the spread record. I think just situationally reminder last year, the Rams lost, lost straight up as a 17 and a half point home favorite to the jets. They're not going to lose this game. Um, but as our, in our production notes here, so good on Hank, the Rams are coming off their biggest loss of the season. The lions are coming off their, their biggest win of the season. The lions are coming off their biggest loss. So we're getting these two teams at a high watermark. This is such a strange stretch for the Rams. They they played the Giants last week, the Lions this week, and the Texans next week. It's like this, what yeah. a strange stretch for like a Super Bowl contender who was in the playoffs last year. Um, I they're not going to sleep through this game, but it's just a big number. And I get that the I get that every week I'm like we should take the Lions, but like the Lions fight. They're not going to, you know, they could be down by 30 and still start, you know, golf except, still going to throw. Except, except last week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> except, except last week. Um, oh, I'm definitely not playing the Lions here, but I'm fine with not playing the Rams right. either. Well, yeah, because this was the one of, I, I I didn't mind the Lions here, which. Uh, is, really? Yeah, it's terrible, but. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, man. 15 and a I'm half, surprised. Jeff. Like, that's, that's, cr- that's dude, a lot. They're, dude, they're not, dude, I thought la- they were at home last week and that's. Bengals boat race. So the only thing you can think of is that the Rams play down just because they just, you know, there's the energy in the crowd's not really there and there's a little bit of like a letdown. But like, there's no like, reve- it's not a re- Jared Goff, re- he freaking sucks. There's no revenge factor. It's not good <laughs> enough to have a revenge factor. Yeah. Um, so uh, Lions get to, at, you know, at, as you mentioned, at the Texans next. I mean, who the Rams are like, there's no look ahead part to this game. I don't feel very comfortable with the Rams at 15, but I, I think that's just a lot of points. And that's not what we do in this podcast. Yeah. Ugh, man, we're running out of games here, but I, I you, maybe you can talk me into it later. All right. The, a, a, a tighter spread, but a game that's hard to read is uh, Philly going to Vegas. Uh, Vegas is just a three point favorite here. Two teams I, I'm having a hard time getting a handle on. What uh, what do you think? Same here. I really don't believe in the Eagles. And so I, I think I would stay away from this because I think a lot of people are on, on Vegas this week um, after their coach. Uh, you know, they had a good showing w- w- without John Gruden. They ran a play action pass a lot more than they had in the previous games, which is which is really helpful. Um, and again, I don't think the Eagles are very good. But I, I don't really have a thought in this game more than like the Eagles aren't very good. And but I don't know if Vegas is that good either. So like I, I'm just I'd stay away. Yeah, I would lean Vegas, but they haven't covered at home as a favorite yet. I think they're getting a lot of credit for just winning a game last week against Denver. So I, I some something, something's off with this, but I don't like Philly at all. Um, so, yeah, that that's a pass. Jeez, that one o'clock window is going to be tough. Let's. Do the next game because yeah. there's a little bit of a, a breaking news uh, about uh, a quarterback on one of the teams that's next. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay, the Houston Texans at Carolina or at, at Arizona. Um, we are seeing 17 and a half right now as we are taping this. But if it's what I think it is, it might move. John McClain, who covers um, uh, the Houston Texans, uh, Houston Chronicles, has been there for 45 years. Uh, tweeted out, uh, Texans and Dolphins could have a Deshaun Watson deal done this week. Whoa. Yeah. Huh. Obviously, it doesn't affect this game at all. It just happened to be the game we're talking about. Whoa. Ooh. 
Wow, that would obviously change how the way uh, we feel about Miami. But nonetheless, nonetheless, um, huh. yeah, there's there's no play, there's no play in this game, so we, we don't have to talk much about this game. I thought you were going to say Terod Taylor is coming back, and then I was going to say let's hammer the it, Texans. It, it, if to, I'll, I'll tell you what, if. Terod Taylor is coming back. I will gladly throw out one game we have on this and put Houston here plus 17 and a half. I would gladly do that. But until he plays, I'm not doing that. But I, 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 if Terod Taylor was here at 17 and a half, Matt, I'm with you. Let's get after it. But he's not right now. Jeff, can I please make the case for taking 17 and a half? Can I please? Can I just, can I just make it? Okay, go ahead. Uh, as a home favorite under Kingsbury, the Cardinals are three and six. Against spread. Okay. Uh, from what I can tell, it's hard to research this. Uh, teams that are getting 17 and a half against the spread, they are, they've never lost from the examples that I've seen. It's a good spot to be in. Um, I think they actually, there's a couple examples, including the Rams last year against the Jets, where that team straight up won. I just don't think that the Cardinals are going to be up for this one. Think about like, so they have to win by 20, essentially. Like, is that going to, is how likely is that? I, I don't know. In, in a game of two professional teams, I, I just think that. Uh, it's funny you say, because like after last week, there were like four of those games last week. Yeah. And that's why these lines are so high. No, I, and no, you're right. I, I have, I probably, I, you know, by the end of this, I actually have a way to, to get some of these uh, numbers. I, I probably can. Find that number by the end of, by the end of this thing. Text so you're, you're, you're going to text so, your guy. So, <laughs> no, 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 no. I have. I'm on this website. I have access to it. I just. I'm not. I gotta figure out where the betting stats are. Um. So do you? So you are. Oh, here it is right here. Um. So you're good. You no matter who's quarterback, you're at. You're at. You're fine with that number. Yeah, I mean, traditionally, Kingsbury's teams as a favorite have not been good. Um. This is not a game again where Arizona is like Arizona just needs to win this. I could. This just has the feeling of like, huh? Arizona is only up by seven with so, so, so eight like, minutes left. So the range is like seventeen to what? Seventeen and a half? You said seventeen and a half. Yeah, I did the seventeen, seventeen and a half. Let's do. Uh, and reminder: the Cardinals are playing the Packers on Thursday. Quick season. Turn. Oh, they are. Oh, oh, I, I kind of like that. Yeah. So let's do like what the last like ten years. Let's do like twenty. 2010 to 2021. Let's that's, do it. Uh, that's 11 years. I'm kind of curious what I can get here. Let's see if it's no results. Cover the spread seven. No, let's see here. 17 to 24. Why are there's not results? Yeah. By team. I think I know what site you're on. It's like you have to like be like an Excel PhD to piece through this data. There were a couple examples uh, of teams that were 17 and a half point dogs that won straight up it's some of the biggest upsets it's for whatever reason like some of the biggest straight up upsets in nfl history have been at this number that doesn't mean i think the texans are winning this game um so like yeah so like we've seen uh last year the jets in la won in uh won. Just, they won here i'm kind of curious here but okay so here's okay here's the full list of the last 10 years there's not many games over i said 17 24 i mean like yeah so um, it looks like we have, uh, you yeah, know, in 2018, the Bengals covered in 2020 last year, the, the Broncos, that was that game where they didn't have any, Great have any um, yeah. yeah, this year, the Houston, the Texans did not cover in Buffalo. If, if you recall, uh, in 2019, the dolphins beat new England outright. Uh, it's all, mm. a, a lot of these are Dolphins games. 2019, the Dolphins got their ass kicked. 2019 again, Dolphins covered against Buffalo. God, there's so many Dolphins. Jeez, it's like Dolphins and Jets. Yeah. Um, Dolphins again got their ass kicked by New England in 2019. That was that week. You know, that was that week two when they. Then there's there's just five times the Jets have had this been been an underdog between 17 and 24 points uh, since 20. 10 and um, excuse me, this is only since 2015 because they don't have details uh, after that. And they covered in one, two, three, no, three, two of the three games. I, this is such it's just a fucking terrible segment yeah, it's of radio. Terrible sample size. But I'll, I mean, the other thing about the Texans, we've spent way too much time on this game. But the other thing about the Texans is like they're those Dolphins teams were like all rookies and undrafted guys and tanking teams. Like, this is a team that's got like a it's probably one of the older teams in the league. Like they're going to show up. I, I just think that you could pr- we're we might lose by 17, but that's fine. All right. Fuck it. Sorry for my language. <laughs> I mean, that's what it requires. Plus 17.5. OK. Oh, 
I, I liked I liked the, the best angle you said was Cardinals on a short week at Green Bay the next week. Green Bay's coming to them. Yeah. So oh, it's, Green Bay's coming to them. But that's, 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 that's the, the Green best. Bay angle too. Yeah. Against Washington. It's like that, that's yeah. probably the game's like first seed in the NFC is going to be that game. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. this is just get through it. Um, great game oh, here. Sort of uh, <laughs> Chicago at Tampa. Not a great game at all. Just trying to get off of that last game. Uh, Tampa's laying 12 and a half uh, rematch of the fifth Ugh. down game from last year. That, uh, yeah. Tampa's not been good against the spread this year. Um, they are They're six and one. The last seven as a host, two and four against the spread this season, though. Um, yeah, I don't want to play Chicago here, Mm-mm. but I don't want to play Tampa either. So, I guess we're just passing this game. I don't. I don't like this game at all. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. There's another one where they try not to get people to tease it. Right. Yep. Because they're yeah. getting, they're taking a bath on these big teases. Yeah. Um, all right, we're into the Sunday night window here. Maybe we have a game here. Uh, the Colts are plus four and a half. At San Francisco, Jimmy G looks like he's going to play. Uh, Trey Lance did not practice. Jimmy G did. Um, do you have a lean? <sighs> I mean, I don't really want. I don't want to take Indianapolis, but I think like everyone's taking Indianapolis. I really don't want to. I mean, you hate Carson Wentz, but at, the Colts have had a brutal schedule. I, I know their record's not good, but they've had a tough schedule. Um, they're four and two against the spread. San Francisco's one and four against the spread. They're one of those teams that came in with such high expectations and they just haven't looked that good. Um, I've, I'm fine with Indy here. It's a good number. I think this will be a close game. We don't know what the deal is with the quarterbacks in San Francisco. Um, the Colts can run the ball. They'll, they can, you know, keep this close. I don't we think it's a bad four, play. We have four and a half or four here. Four and a half. Four and a half. Um, Oh jeez, I'm looking at I'm looking at our, our list here and it's just it's making me so depressed. Oh jeez. Oh, I'm looking at physical pain. Look at these. I have to root for the Texans to cover 17 and a half. Two Atungo Vailoa and so far Taylor Heineke. Oh God. Oh, just, and now in the Monday Night Football game, I'm gonna have to root for fucking Geno Smith. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you have to do. Why do you want to put a pin in this and, co- and go to Monday night? Because that's one where I think we we have to make a play. Yeah, we have to bet on Seattle. Yeah, so that's the Saints are laying four and a half as road favorites in Seattle. I think this is this is one we just have to put in and just figure out what our other four are. I I'm uh, I'm seeing fives. I I'll take five. Let's take the five. We need all the help we can get. Gino has covered his last six against the spread. Pete Carroll, 17 and eight against the spread as an underdog of plus four or more. Got to do it. Yeah, you have to do it. Um, even though the Saints look like they're healthier, but I, I think this is like this is Seattle's season, right? In yep. this game. Um, and uh, I'm I'm with you here. You just have to suck it up and do it. You it's do. that simple in this game. I, I Dude, I'm just like, physical, I'm like ill thinking about these picks. They're bad. They're really bad. Uh, so, so far, I'm sorry for my my angst, everyone, but it's just it's just brutal. So far, we have Washington plus eight and a half, Miami plus two and a half, Houston plus seventeen and a half, Seattle plus five. We have. I mean, dude, let's take the goddamn Titans. Like, let's get one team in the mix there. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, the, the other ones that were in contention were the Panthers, three point we, road we, we faves, De- Denver tonight, Denver tomorrow. Baltimore minus six and a half, Carolina minus three, LA minus 15, Indy plus four and a half. I feel like Indy's better than ten, than would be better than Tennessee. Let's get the Rams out of there. We're not laying 15. No, I know. <laughs> do, 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 do you think Indy's better than Tennessee, though? Because, I mean, there, there's a there's a thing I, there's a, I can envision. Tennessee's at home, though. Chief, I can envision the Chiefs winning that game 41-34. Like, I, I, I can't envision the Niners are going to beat the Colts by more than a field goal. Off a of bye. That's their home. Jimmy G is undefeated on Sunday night football. Uh, I don't know. I mean, well, the, let's work backwards. We're definitely going to include Seattle, right? Well, who? Seattle plus five. Yeah, no, our, our four are, are Washington eight and a half, Miami plus two and a half, Houston plus 17 and a half, and Seattle plus five. Those are the four that are in. Okay. So then we have one spot for Tennessee, Baltimore. Or- or indie probably or indie. Or indie. Yeah. 
God, if Tyrod Taylor plays, that's a really good number for for Tennessee. I mean, yeah, for, I, for Houston, by the way. I know. I think it's. A, I mean, it's just a good number anyway. Um, oh, geez. man. Okay, what, what? I, the, we're scared of the Ravens. I feel like we got to lose the Ravens. Okay, we'll go with the Ravens. Um, it's a visual game. I mean, is it as simple as just taking Denver tomorrow night? To be exposed to Thursday and, and Monday. I know. <sighs> you know we, did, we did Sunday and Monday last, Sunday night and Monday night. I'm go, okay, so we're throwing Carolina minus three out, even though I think that is probably the best play. But um, Looks like Tarada's not playing, apparently, by the way. Oh, well, that doesn't make me feel any better, but no. Um, so it's Tennessee or, or, or Indy, right? Or Indy. I mean, Tennessee is at home. They just they just thrash the Bills on the road. Yeah, aren't you worried about like, aren't you just worried about that that part of it? Like, here's my thing with the KC with, doesn't cover, with, though. Yeah, I know. But here's the thing with the Chiefs. Again, I mean, they're they're all self-inflicted wounds. And if they're able to just not do stupid shit on offense, they're going to score 40 points in this game. And Tennessee has tried this run the ball against Kansas City. It has just not worked for them quite quite like we thought it would. Um, I don't know. I, I think you're, you're right, though. Tennessee is the right play here. Yeah. We're, rather than Carson Wentz right. on the road. Like, come on. All right. We'll do Tennessee. Every, so, we're just so af- I think everyone psychologically is so afraid to lose to Pat Mahomes because we, we you sit there and you're watching. Well, I, and you're like, well, I, well, I root for the Chiefs. I so I, yeah. I root for the Chiefs. I don't want to like have to be like, oh, well, the Chiefs win by five by less than five. Um, <laughs> what kind you know of gambler I mean? are you? So um, we're going to be rooting right. for the Dolphins against the Falcons. You can do some math. Calm down. So to recap, <laughs> so to recap, everyone. Jeff's head is in his hands. And he looks so sad. Like this the is problem, what it, this is what it takes. You have to have thing. weeks like this where you go like, <laughs> please kick a field goal, was, Davis was say, Mills. Like this is what, what it takes. To say, we're going to definitely go five and zero this week. Just because I well, just feel so ill about these things. Let's calm down. That. Okay, so Washington because like, oh, just Washington plus eight and a half. <laughs> Miami plus two and a half. Do you feel great about you feel good about that one, right? Miami. I mean, that's just sound betting. Like I don't yeah. feel good about it at all. It sounds fucking terrible, Jeff. Would would Miami or Indy be better? You think <laughs> Miami, right? Yeah, yeah, home dog. Team, yeah. yeah. Atlanta is a road favorite. Come on, we got to bet whoever they're playing. I don't care. Um, it could be the Houston plus 08 17 Lions. and a half. Yep. Seattle plus five and Tennessee plus. So we're betting on Taylor Heineke. Just, just to recap, Taylor Heineke <laughs> against Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> Tua Tonga Vailoa against my Jordan, da- Davis Mills against MVP, uh-huh. Geno Smith. And Ryan Tannehill. Those are the, those are the quarterbacks we're betting on this week. I think even better, we're going against. Uh, we're also going against Rogers, Mahomes, right. Rogers, Mahomes, uh, Kyler Murray, like right. three like MVP candidates. Uh-huh. Oh Jesus! All right, guys, well, welcome. On. I'm glad you listened to our show today, everybody. <laughs> I mean, yeah, honestly, like this will either be like a good education of what it's like to win bets or like why we should just have bet on the uh, Rams minus 15. We'll see. It's just, it's, I'm like, I'm in physical. I mean, you go to the doctor. I'm in physical pain right yeah, now. This is just Ill. the worst. This is the worst. And you're exactly right. We're going to be sitting there like. Oh my God! I have a kids party this weekend on Sunday. I told my wife I might not go. I'm definitely going to go so I can miss all this crap. Yeah, I don't just watch miss it, dude. Games. Just miss it. Oh, jeez. All right, everyone. Powered by the Va- the Varsity <laughs> Podcast Network. I'm sure they're pumped about this about this show. Um, I've been told the algorithm wants you to comment on my podcast and give reviews yes. on iTunes. So please, if you listen this far, just shoot just shoot me. I would love to do like a sort of mailbag or just take your questions based off of of comments left um, on on. Um, on the podcast. If you give me enough comments, I will do so. But right now, I don't have enough. So uh, please leave me uh, a review and a comment. I'd really appreciate that. And we can't do any worse. So um, yeah, go fighting Davis Mills. Let's and go, Davis. Let's go, Taylor Heineke and Geno Smith. Our guys. All right, guys. Have a great weekend, everyone. Talk to everyone later. <laughs>